So, pastiche. Probably not a word that you hear all that much, and when you do, I'll bet it's in a mostly derogatory way. Like, a certain song might steer a little too close to pastiche, which is a favourite phrase of critics. But I'm here, basically, to defend pastiche and to clear things up a little. You see, not only is pastiche not really the dirty word that you may have been led to believe, it probably isn't even what you think it is. After all, this is a pastiche. And this is... And this... And this... And then this whole album is pretty much pastiche. Okay, so... What the hell is pastiche, actually? Pastiche means both a sort of potpourri or hodgepodge of different musical styles put into one work. So, Happiness is a warm gun and Bohemian Rhapsody are two very famous examples of this. They have different sections and quite radically different styles mixed up throughout them. Pastiche also means something that imitates the style of another work or genre. A literary pastiche, for example, might imitate the style of a different writer. Modern architectural styles that consciously take elements from older styles can be pastiche too, like, for example, Gothic or revival architecture of the 19th century. And in music, when Megan Trainer sang her totally, not in any way annoying, actually admittedly quite catchy song, all about that bass, in that retro doo-wop style, she was doing a pastiche. Because you know I'm all about the I'm like, No God! Bruno Mars's Downtown Funk is pastiche. Girl said you hallelujah. Girl said you hallelujah. Uh, you hear bits of it in Donald Glover's music, lots in King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard. Harry Styles is another contemporary musician who seems to really like this second type of pastiche. And a recent review of one of his albums discusses this affinity for pastiche. In that review, pastiche is used pretty much solely in negative terms and implies that to do pastiche is inherently to be derivative or passé or lazy. In other discussions of pastiche, it's just misunderstood to mean the same as parody or lampoon. See, if you just go and Google the word, you'll almost exclusively find stuff about parody and not much actually about pastiche. The two terms are completely conflated in 99% of the discussion. So again, what pastiche really is, is either a bunch of styles and genres smooshed together into one piece of art, which is less commonly how the word is used, or it is an imitation of another style, usually in homage rather than parody, though the lines are sometimes blurry, like with Weird Al or something like that. This actually means then that both Happiness is a Warm Gun and Bohemian Rhapsody are doubly pastiches. They are both a hodgepodge of different styles and, at points, imitations of other styles, like the doo-wop section in Happiness is a Warm Gun. Go! and the operatic elements in Bohemian Rhapsody. Thunderbolts and lightning, very, very frightening me. But it's just that second type that I want to talk about today, pastiche as an imitation of a style. So why do I think this is all so important? And why does everyone seem to dismiss or downright dislike this sort of pastiche? Let's talk about that second question first. What is everyone's problem with pastiche? Well, I think there's a lot going on here. Firstly, a lot of it is just down to that misunderstanding, which I've already mentioned, of what the word really means. A lot of the time, people don't actually hate pastiche. They just conflate pastiche with parody or satire or mockery or spoof. Or they think that pastiche means rip-off or downright plagiarism. Or maybe simply being overly derivative or conservative in their style. But there is a difference between pastiche and parody, and there's a difference between pastiche and ripoff. Pastiche is not plagiarism or just being a bit old fashioned. Pastiche is its own thing. Imitating the style of a previous work or another genre needn't inherently be super derivative, nor mocking, nor satirical. I think that's obvious with me just defining it properly and with my examples so far, but you would think otherwise looking at the way that so many people use the word. That whole steers a little close to pastiche line that critics love is nothing more, honestly, than a thought terminating cliche. It's an easy way to say, I think this song is too derivative, which might be true, but again, that's not the same as pastiche. Can we please just leave pastiche out of it? <laughs> Calling something derivative pastiche is not always useful and it's rarely accurate. Anyway, 
I think the next big part of why pastiche is plagued by this bad reputation and misunderstanding is a kind of unspoken but very widespread myth of what artistry is. It's the myth that the best art is actually a sort of purely original thing that comes from this deep, unique place of creativity in an artist, rather than based on mere copying and imitation. Now, this is a very, very big topic and it's hard to disentangle and fully explore it here. Uh, and it's not a completely universal assumption, but it's still very common. To be clear as well, it's nothing new. There's at least a few thousand years of history to the romanticization of artists as these wellsprings of pure creativity and originality. I too value originality in music and art generally. I do like it. Uh, and there is definitely such a thing as being overly derivative. Been dazed and confused for so long, it's not true. I'm dazed and confused, hanging on by a thread. But there are lots of issues with this view. After all, all art is to some degree imitation in the same way that all language and culture and everything we do really is imitation. The point is that one of the popular, if unspoken, logical conclusions to this original artist myth is the idea that you're not being original if you do a pastiche. You are instead being derivative, which is of course true, but you're also supposedly ripping someone off and being lazy which is not necessarily true. Does that make sense? Anyway, that's why people don't like pastiche. Moving on to that second question then, why is pastiche so important? And therefore, implicitly, why should everyone like it? Well, loads of reasons, but let's stick to the three that I find most interesting and compelling. So firstly, it's important because it's far more common than you might realize, it's everywhere. If you like music, or are you like pastiche on some level, even if you don't think you do. It really is that simple. Secondly, pastiche offers such a rich seam of artistic expression. There's so much potential when you start turning to other styles, especially ones that have been forgotten about or ignored for a long period of time. It can, in a way, feel like to do pastiche is to be artistically conservative or lazy, but that's not inherent to it. I might even argue, and in fact, I just believe this, um, if you refuse to engage in at least a little bit of conscious pastiche, you're just leaving loads of musical vocabulary and artistic expression on the table. Why do that? And finally, pastiche covers far more ground, conceptually speaking, than you might think. Sure, it's obvious that that little bit in uh, Spirit of Radio by Rush is a reggae pastiche, right? But music isn't just limited to pastiching genres and styles within music. You can pastiche elements of poetry, drama, film, language, whatever you want. So let's explore these three points. First one, pastiche is far more common than you might think. As I've just said, all art on some level is imitative. This is something that we all have to realize one way or another. No artist can be completely original. My pal's name is Football, for your ways lights to norm. My pal. And the line between imitation and pastiche is actually quite blurry and unclear much of the time. It's so blurry precisely because we're always imitating other styles when we make art. That notion of creativity as being wholly original that I mentioned earlier is just complete bullshit. 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 It's just not a productive attitude and it's just completely wrong. I can't emphasize that enough. Of course, that doesn't therefore mean that all art is pastiche solely by virtue of being imitative, but the point is that there are levels to it, varying degrees of pastichiness. Like, there are some obvious ones out there, right? Whether it's Robin Thicke's Blurred Lines, <laughs> The Beatles' jaunty, whimsical Edwardian ditties. This is my band, and from now on, the Beatles are going to release nothing but jaunty, whimsical Edwardian ditties, such as when I'm 64 and your mother should bastard know. Pop music is full of these very blatant examples. But what about less obvious pastiches? Songs that are a bit pastiche, but not quite so blatantly. You know, lightly pastiche, or songs that are pastiche with a twist. There's a whole range of pastichiness beyond full blown. So here's my somewhat arbitrarily demarcated spectrum of pastiche. So there's that baseline level of imitation that all art has to engage with, right? This is not pastiche. It's just not really imitative enough. 
it's worth pointing out here just to give us a bit of a baseline to start from. Next, there's lightly pastiche music that is only a little bit pastiche. And then there's pastiche with a twist, which is probably the most common form. It's pastiche, yeah, but it's done in a unique, characteristic, idiosyncratic kind of novel way, unlike the next one, which is full blown, conscious attempt at convincingly imitating another artist or style. This is quite rare. And finally, back into what I don't think is really pastiche anymore a ripoff, plagiarism. Ripoffs aren't really pastiches, they're ripoffs. This stuff is simply too imitative to call pastiche. Um, a plagiarized piece of art can still be good or brilliant, in fact, but it's not what I'm interested in here. So we're just looking at the three middle categories then. Let's start with lightly pastiche. This is music that merely has that relationship with pastiche. We might not want to call it full-blown pastiche, but it's also not not pastiche, if you get me. You sometimes hear this when an artist wants to give another style a little go, but doesn't really know much about it and maybe doesn't care to learn, or they just want to use it as a bit of a flavor rather than embracing it fully. Sometimes it's not even that conscious or self-aware. The classical music tradition of Turkish music, I think would fit in here. The third movement from Mozart's 11th Piano Sonata is probably the most famous example of this. This style was very popular in the late 18th and early 19th centuries in Europe and was supposedly modeled on the music of Turkish military music from Janissary bands. But in all honesty, it bears little resemblance, uh, especially to the modern ear. This sort of pastiche really is only very lightly pastiche. If I played you one of Beethoven's bits of so-called Turkish music, and you compared it to Janissary music, The link is quite tenuous, and most people would, listening to the Beethoven, just think, oh, it's classical music, without any further caveat. But it's still a little bit pastiche, is the point. King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard are probably the best example of a contemporary band who quite consistently reside in this sort of territory. Their music always sounds like them. They're not going on full-blown excursions into other genres, but they're always taking bits here and there. Oh, this album might sound like some kind of late 60s psych thing, this is a bit more bluesy, whatever, but they always maintain their own unique identity throughout, and I can't really identify any full-blown pastiche in their music. So next we have pastiche with a twist. This is probably the most common type. You might hear this when an artist is like spreading their wings a little bit, trying out other styles, but still employing, broadly speaking, their usual sound. It's stronger than the first category, but in a way it's not that different. The band or musician still sounds like them, but they're clearly leaning into a different sound a bit more. So Stevie Wonder does this twice on his Hotter Than July album with Master Blaster, which is a clear like reggae pastiche. and I Ain't Gonna Stand For It, which is much more country. Uh, the thing is, these are quite obviously pastiches, but at the same time, no one is going to mistake them for the genres they're imitating. They sound like Stevie. Even when he's doing that silly country accent, it's still a Stevie Wonder song. Similarly for Master Blaster, it's Stevie Wonder. Uh, it has its synths, it has that 80s, kind of funky production. It has that reggae beat, sure, but is otherwise just not quite reggae. Uh, the Frank Zappa song, Joe's Garage, or Joe's Garage, is a very strong version of this sort of pastiche. This time of doo-wop. We could jam in Joe's garage. His mama was screaming and his dad was bad. Was... Zappa's style has always been far too idiosyncratic and strange for him to just go full pastiche, but Doo-wop was a style that he repeatedly turned to as a source for imitation. Joe's Garage, or Garage, is probably his most famous example, but there are loads. The doo-wop elements in this song aren't just slight flavor notes here, it is a doo-wop song, but with that sardonic zapper twist. I mean, just listen to it. No one is going to mistake it as a sincere version of the genre, as you would have heard in the 50s and early 60s. I think most of the Beatles pastiches, and there are loads, 
fall into this category, like George's forays into indie music. There's some quite heavy, like, borrowing going on there, but they're still pop songs, aren't they? And then there are the more folksy kind of moments, like You've Got to Hide Your Love Away, or the funkier, soulful moments, like Got to Get You Into My Life. Got to get you into my life. It's all pastiche with a twist. And finally, there's full-blown, imitative, conscious pastiche. This isn't just an artist wanting to try on a different style for size. This is an artist thinking, hey, how about I try to write a song in a genre I don't usually play, maybe even a whole album. This is rarer, it's, it's much rarer, partly I assume because it's just not often commercially viable. Who wants to hear a rock band go full country or a funk band go full folk? Everyone knows you never go full folk. Doing this, you're probably just going to alienate your usual audience and likely not impress fans of the other style. So, yeah, it's just not popular to do this. But you do hear it occasionally. Ween have arguably built their entire career off of doing exactly this. When they do a song in the style of someone else, you could almost believe it was a long-lost B-side by the artist they're imitating. They even go so far as to copy their accent and vocal style. Compare, let's say, Gabrielle, who don't believe a word, by Thin Lizzy. I don't mean to be so insolent, but you know it's because I love you. Don't believe me if I tell you, not a word if this is true. They even released an actual full-blown country album recorded in Nashville with country music legends. Days go by. But Ween are a unique band with a pretty unique fan base that will put up with them just changing directions quite a lot, you know, multiple times on the same album. Um, they're a cult band, basically, is what I'm saying. Anyway, the Beatles, back to the Beatles, as I said before, do occasionally go full pastiche, like on Year Blues or Rocky Raccoon. I think Year Blues sounds like a British blues rock band. It's as good or actually, I think, in my opinion, uh, better than pretty much anything by Cream. In the morning, wanna die. Anyway, anyway, by now, I think, and I hope that I've given you enough evidence to support the second broad point about why pastiche is important. Pastiche is important and good, because it offers such a rich seam of artistic expression. I mean, come on, I've given you so many good songs. How could anyone say that pastiche sucks after all of that? Well, let me explain it a bit. This point is ultimately all about openness to other cultures, other vocabularies, other mediums, and just ideas from other sources in general. We learn through imitation. We learn by stealing ideas, honestly. That's not to say that creativity and originality are complete myths, but a lot of creativity and originality is really just combining things in new and interesting ways rather than inventing something completely new. And pastiche is a big part of that. Looking to another genre outside your usual thing is really just exploring new ideas and new ways of doing things. And what better way to explore those new musical ideas or modes of expression than by just trying them out? in a song or a composition. It's hands-on experience, it's learning by doing. Copying others is the best way to learn musical vocabulary, push yourself into new forms and all that stuff. So why not copy whatever you can from whoever you can, from whatever style and whatever genre and medium you can. It's no coincidence that every major figure in art, music, literature, architecture, whatever has engaged in at least a little bit of conscious pastiche in order to learn and develop their skills and as a core part of their musical like identity and expression like Shakespeare, Bach, Beethoven, The Beatles, Michelangelo, it doesn't matter everyone who's worth talking about has done it to some degree. Um, I'm not going to cover all in detail here but it's very important to realize that pastiche is not only artistically valid and cool, but it's also just a great pedagogical tool. You know, the whole write a song in the style of X, write a poem in the style of Y type thing. It's a brilliant way to learn and most musicians start their musical journeys doing precisely this. Anyway, my final point is that pastiche covers more ground or can cover more ground than you might even begin to imagine, even with everything I've already talked about. Sure, an artist might pastiche another musical style or another musical genre, but what about musicians pastiching art from other mediums? What would that look like? Well, it looks interesting and good, in my opinion. The first example that comes to my mind 
because I'm very cool, you see, is Emerson, Lake and Palmer's imitation of like the spiel of a circus promoter in Carnival 9. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. We're so glad you could attend. I'm not the biggest ELP fan in the world and honestly always thought that this album was a bit overrated amongst prog fans. But this moment is brilliant. I love it. And it's definitely pastiche. It just so happens that what it's pastiching and imitating isn't a musical style. It's more a rhetorical or theatrical style. Anyway, if we think about it just for a moment, it turns out that this type of pastiche is actually quite common. Thriller's spoken word intro by Vincent Price was a willing attempt pastiche cheesy horror films. Beyond that, it's just a funky disco song. It's not pastiching a musical style, but pastiching non-musical forms is still pastiche. And this might be the most famous example ever. The foulest dent is in the air. The funk. Meat Loafs, or really Jim Steinman's Paradise by the Dashboard Light, has that weird middle bit where it sounds like radio commentary for a baseball game. It's some tortuous, long drawn out, weird sexual metaphor. I really like the song, but that bit doesn't quite work for me. I wish they just like took it out. It's a bit goofy. But it is definitely pastiche, 100%. This time of a radio broadcast and kind of like that sports commentary thing. We could even say that songs like Paperback Writer by The Beatles or to a lesser extent Vietnam by Jimmy Cliff are pastiches of a written medium. And this is what he had to say. The lyrics to both songs are framed as letters and the imitation is more lyrical than music, but both songs use this sort of conceptual pastiche to great the quite different effect. In the Navy by the village people is a pastiche of, you know, recruitment drives or just downright propaganda from military organizations. Once we get into this sort of territory, pastiche gets a bit more problematic as it arguably veers a little close to novelty music. Not all of it, but the village people, definitely. Thriller, yeah, it was literally just seen as a novelty song by Jackson's record label, Epic, at first. So, yeah, novelty music and pastiche can kind of blur into each other. The point is that although I've made this video to defend pastiche, it's not all smooth sailing. There is a real risk of pastiche, I think, and that is falling into novelty music, being gimmicky and vapid rather than enriching and broadening. That, I think would be a much more interesting way for music critics to talk about pastiche by musicians, rather than just, oh, it still is a little too close to pastiche. That doesn't tell us anything. People just like to say that. Stop saying it. Which brings me to my conclusion. I hope I've done a good job of convincing you that pastiche is actually very interesting, very cool, and quite often a source of real creativity. That's not to say you can't overdo it or do it clumsily or whatever. Recently, the band Greta Van Fleet have come under a lot of flack for quite obviously pastiching Led Zeppelin. I don't think anyone out there is actually accusing them of straightforward plagiarism, but of clumsy pastiche, yeah. I think the issue with them ultimately comes down to the fact that they deny the influence of Led Zepp on their music, which seems a little disingenuous, but what can you do? Anyway, I hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it gave you plenty to think about. If you can think of any cool examples of pastiche that I didn't mention or that you think I should know about, please comment below. Thanks.